I don't claim to be an expert on toy production, but one thing I do know is that it costs a lot of money to make the toys that we love. So much so that when a unique mold is made, companies will often maximize the usage of said toy design as many times as they can by giving us numerous repaints of the same toy, which is why we basically got five Sideswipe Bros. Four Cliff B clones, three cone heads, two wheel jacks, and a third Datsun named Smokescreen. Do you believe in second chances? Well, as a kid, one of my very first Transformer toys was the Silver Autobot. Blue Streak. I got him from my dad who came home from a business trip from the US bearing gifts. In possibly one of the greatest hauls he ever got for me, I received the Decepticon leader Megatron, the Autobot Air Guardian Jetfire, and Blue Streak. And given the epicness of receiving Megs and Jetfire in one fell swoop, I'm sure you can understand how a minor character like Blue Streak could be lost in all the excitement. Still, I did like my Blue Streak toy quite a lot and played with him so much so that he eventually lost his luster and his poorly designed windshield unfortunately and inevitably broke off. And it wasn't long before my poor Blue Streak was soon lost in the endless sea of time. Okay, so that's a bit dramatic. He basically disappeared into the depths of my toy room. Anyway, fast forward a year later, and instead of waiting for my dad to return home from another business trip, there I was, alongside him, on a US vacation walking down the hollowed halls of Toys R Us for the first time. And that's when this guy immediately caught my attention. Smokescreen wasn't just a straight-up repaint of Blue Streak. He was a more colorful and cooler-looking version of Blue Streak. I'm not sure if you can recall, but I remember being especially attracted to his box art, which featured Smokescreen in a more dynamic lunging pose as opposed to his two previous Datsun bros who stoically stood back. But all that aside, the main thought running through my 9-year-old brain was, yes, I get another chance to have a better Blue Streak toy. And that was my first experience with the Autobot Diversionary Tactician, Smokescreen. To be honest, as a kid, the words diversionary tactician basically flew over my head. All I cared about was that this was my second shot at the Datsun Mold toy, and I just couldn't get over how his red, white, and blue race car deco looked so much more awesome. I felt like I hit the jackpot with this guy. So Smokescreen was part of the second wave of Autobot cars released in 1985. Alongside fellow repaint slash retools of previous Autobots, Hoist and Red Alert, as well as newer designs like Trax, Inferno, Grapple, and Skids. And of all of them, aside from the fact that he was the only toy that I had from the bunch, Smokescreen was my definite favorite. Anyway, given that the main goal of the cartoon and the comics was to sell more toys, it's no surprise that there really wasn't too much effort given in coming up with proper introductions or much less explanations on how these new characters came to be. In the cartoon, Smokescreen and company just magically appeared in the second season of the series, as if they were there from the very start. At least in the comics, Smokescreen's addition is somewhat explained in that prior to the Autobots' exodus to Earth, he and his fellow second waivers agreed to have their minds encoded on crystalline containment vessels. Left in storage for millions of years after the crash, the new Autobots were eventually reactivated inside newly constructed bodies when reinforcements were needed. To their credit, due to the fact that Smokescreen was basically a repaint of Blue Streak and Prowl, the artists for the cartoon and comics did make an effort to visually differentiate him from his two brothers. Unfortunately, what they came up with as a final design was kinda… disappointing. Unlike Blue Streak and Prowl's designs which were more stylized and well, better proportioned, Smokescreen's appearance was definitely more simplified, to look more like a direct translation from the toy. He was stockier and blockier, especially when it came to his head sculpt, which now sported a really ugly rectangular design which made him look, for lack of a better word, necklace. And add to that a pair of equally angular shoulder cannons on each side and you've got one really ugly Autobot. Talk about sucking all the cool out of a character. 
Anyway, while for the most part Smokescreen wasn't much of a major player in both the original comics and cartoons, he did manage to star in his own special episode of the cartoon called The Gambler. The episode starts off with Optimus Prime and a bunch of Autobots, including Smokescreen, getting captured in space by an alien named Bosch, who immobilizes the Autobots with the intention of selling them off as slaves. Very early on, Smokescreen notices that Bosch is addicted to gambling, as he shows off his very own personal slot machine which he apparently can't win at. Sensing an opportunity, Smokescreen shows off his ability to manipulate machinery with the use of a not-so-subtle cable from his wrist and beats Bosch's machine. Impressed, Bosch strikes up a partnership with Smokescreen and the two head off to the gambling planet of Monacus, where they win big. Unfortunately, Smokescreen gets caught up in all the excitement and basically bets all their winnings on one high-stakes gamble. That doesn't pay off. His little advantage is discovered and deactivated, and the duo lose all their winnings, which include Prime and Company, who were used as collateral to a local swindler named Guy Kongni. So as the story goes, the Decepticons Astrotrain, Ramjet, and Dirge show up to shake down Guy Kongni. The Autobots end up in a gladiatorial pit to battle some Animalians, and Smokescreen meets up with an Autobot bounty hunter named Defcon and eventually saves the day and rescues everyone by using his other special ability, filling up the entire gladiatorial arena in smoke. In the end, the Decepticons flee, Defcon goes off on his next adventure, and Smokescreen and company return to Earth. But not before going off back to Casino Row with their now new buddy Bosch for a little more rest and relaxation. Entertaining story aside, there was another interesting tidbit I realized after re-watching this episode. So, Smokescreen was voiced by the voice actor Jack Angel, voice of the G.I. Joe SEAL wetsuit as well. He was also the voice of both Ramjet and Astro Train. I also thought that the alien Bosch and Devcon sounded familiar, in a cuppy sort of way. And apparently, both Alien and Bounty Hunter were voiced by John Stephenson, the man behind the Autobot veteran, Cup. So I just found it quite funny how back in the day they must have selected the characters that would appear in any given episode in line with maximizing the schedules of the voice actors. Anyway, this episode also gave us a glimpse of the intended personality of Smokescreen as written on his original tech spec. Unlike the overly talkative Blue Streak or the cold, overly logical Prowl, Smokescreen sets himself apart with his unique charm and overall likability. But that is only half the story when it comes to Smokescreen. True to his diversionary tactician role, this affable side to his personality has its ulterior side as well, as it allows him to gain the trust of his fellow Autobots, and then reports back to Optimus Prime, giving his leader an on-the-ground perspective on what his troops are thinking. On the battlefield, Smokescreen's main objective is to lead the enemy astray and is not above resorting to dishonest methods like flat-out lying, cheating, or stealing to get her done. Of course, it helps immensely that he has that aforementioned ability to emit a magnetic cloud of smoke which sounds both cool and awful at the same time, straight from his tailpipes to engulf Decepticons in polluted darkness. And if that wasn't bad enough, he can also zap them with his Electro Disruptor Rifle for even more fun-filled confusion. So yeah, as a character, I think that there was quite a lot of storytelling potential with Smokescreen, but unfortunately for the most part, he was basically relegated to a second-tier character in most Transformers media. Anyway, before we go any further, I hope you don't mind my ulterior motives in me asking you for help for my channel by leaving a like, a comment, or even a sub if you still haven't. I hope you know that I'm not just blowing smoke up your bums when I say how important your viewership and support is to me. Hearing from all of you is what really inspires me to continue telling these stories, and I am forever appreciative. So, thank you. And now back to the story. Now, despite being pretty much a totally different character, it would be a huge disservice to not mention the version of Smokescreen that was part of the 2010 series, Transformers Prime. I guess you could call this Smokescreen more of an homage to the G1 character, as he had specific callbacks like his red, white, and blue race car deco, although this time predominantly white, as well as the race number 38 on his side. But that's pretty much where the similarities end as this smokescreen isn't as devious as his G1 counterpart. Although, you could say that he does have some charm. Actually, the personality of this smokescreen reminded me more of another popular, over-eager young Autobot with some iconic flames emblazoned on his chest. 
Well, you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Anyway, this smokescreen is best characterized as an eager, young soldier boy who spent most of his time on Cybertron and who, despite undergoing training as an elite guard, was assigned as a security detail at the Iacon Hall of Records guarding Alpha Trion and the relics in the vault. And speaking of relics, Smokescreen comes into the possession of one called a face shifter, which allows him the ability to pass through solid objects, sort of like turning him into Kitty Pride of the X-Men. The phase shifter basically turns into his signature weapon. Eventually, Smokescreen is captured by the Decepticons, is placed in a transport ship, but thankfully escapes and finds his way to Earth in order to join up with Prime and company to start off the second season of the show. Originally though, Smokescreen was intended to join the team much earlier on. In fact, he was supposed to be part of the original cast of Autobots and was meant to be killed off in the season 1 finale. But ultimately, plans changed and the poor Autobot Cliff Jumper took his place as the Autobot who died, only this time in the first episode instead. Ironically, this wasn't the first time Smokescreen cheated death as the original character was supposed to be killed off in the 1986 movie as well. Early storyboards showed a dead smokescreen laying on the ground, most likely squashed by Devastator. But once again, fortunately for him, he was switched out for Wheeljack in the final cut. But back to this smokescreen, who was apparently meant for bigger things. Or at least, that's what we were meant to believe, as he actually comes so close to inheriting the matrix of leadership from a near-death Optimus Prime. I mean, at the time, I actually thought they would do it, given how Smokescreen spoke in a French accent like the Autobot Hot Rod. Just kidding. Given how this Smokescreen was so similar to G1 Hot Rod, who did acquire the Matrix and turn into Rodimus Prime, I genuinely thought that we would be getting Smokimus Prime. Hmm, doesn't have quite the ring, does it? Ah well, turned out to be one big fake out and Smokescreen ended up saving Prime and all was well. He may have not become the new Autobot leader, but he did get a spanking new predominantly blue deco to start off the next season, and the claim to fame that he was almost a prime. Anyway, I don't know if it was due to the original plan of Smokescreen getting killed off, but initially it didn't seem like there was any intention to make a proper Smokescreen toy, as the first one we got basically seemed like a rushed out and forced repaint slash retool of the Decepticon knockout, given to us surprisingly by Takara, who is usually known for being sticklers for accuracy. Thankfully, this time around, Hasbro would eventually release a uniquely designed and engineered smokescreen toy as part of their Beast Hunter subline. Sure, he came with some unnecessary plastic add-on parts to make his car mode look more beastly, but you could easily just leave them off. They then took and retooled and recolored that mold into Prowl. And speaking of recolors, here's a Legion-class version of this smokescreen in G1 colors. Now since we've moved on to the toys, let's keep going. Smokescreen also has the distinct honor of being the first character to be released in the 2003 Alternators and the 2004 Japanese version Binaltech toy lines. These lines featured updated versions of G1 Autobots with officially licensed alt modes, with full interiors and detailing, obviously meant for older toy collectors and car enthusiasts in mind. And while I can't say that I'm big into cars, I was into toys, and this specific line served as my entryway back into collecting toys as an adult. And so the story goes, despite not sharing the same deco as the original smokescreen, this guy is meant to be the OG character who suffered from a bad case of cosmic rust set loose by the Decepticons. But thanks to the Earth Defense Command and their Binaltech project, Smokescreen is the first Autobot to undergo transference into an electro-cell-powered new body, which of course means a new alt mode. No longer a Datsun 280ZX Turbo based on the electromotive touring car driven by Don Devendorf, Binaltech Smokescreen is now a blue 2003 Subaru Impreza WRC rally car coming with two number designations connected with this specific car. The number 7 for the driver Peter Solberg and co-driver Phil Mills, and the number 8 for Tommy Mackinnon and Kaz Lindstrom. He also came in American Alternators Plastic and Japanese Binaltech Diecast Metal. 
This new smokescreen was most likely what served as inspiration for Prime Smokescreen's new Blue Deco and was such a big deal back in the day that Subaru actually made a life-sized model prop of the Binotech smokescreen using body shop parts of the actual car for some corporate event that could actually transform. Anyway, even if the original smokescreen character wasn't featured much, the fact that he was basically a simple repaint slash retool of his more popular Datsun Brothers Prowl and Blue Streak meant that we were never left wanting for any new toys of smokescreen. Starting with my first G1 smokescreen toy since the original, which was released in 2009 as part of Japan's Henkei Henkei or Transform Transform line. Actually, this same toy was released a year prior by Hasbro for their Universe line. I opted to wait a little bit longer for the more superior deco Japanese version. A smokescreen toy was also released to beef up the 2009 live action movie Revenge of the Fallen toy line. But given that there were no Prowl or Blue Streak characters in the previous movie, Hasbro opted to just repaint an existing deluxe jazz toy, blue and red, and call him Smokescreen. And while this guy never made it to the big screen, I believe he was featured in some comics in between the movies. Although, the most memorable role he played was to be fodder for a menacing shockwave to basically slaughter. Then in 2013, after the releases of Masterpiece Prowl and Blue Streak, we finally got the inevitable Masterpiece Smokescreen. And while I guess you could give Takara points for going the extra mile for the uniquely tooled head and shoulder rockets, it's just plain unfortunate that they were based off the super blocky cartoon design, which I guess by this point was to be expected. Years later, they even managed to release a plus version, which was even closer to the cartoon model with even less detailing and an even more blockier head sculpt. But despite coming with some sculpted smoke accessories, I decided to pass on this version. At this point, with every new Datsun release, it's basically a given that a red, white, and blue smoke screen would see the light of day. In the 2014 Combiner Wars toy line, the Protectobot Streetwise was recolored into Prowl, which was then eventually repainted into Smokescreen, with a blue, blue streak released as a special subscription exclusive as well. And finally, in 2019 and 2020, the two latest versions of Smokescreen were released. First was a Cybertronian mode from the War of Cybertron Siege line, and secondly, the Earth version from Earthrise. But hey, I'm definitely not complaining at all. The more smoke screens, the better in my opinion. Hasbro definitely loves their Datsuns. In fact, Hasbro apparently loves Datsuns so much that they even brought in a new brother into the family with the evil Decepticon Barricade who in actuality is more of a straight up repaint of smoke screen than his two other bros. Yup, same blockhead design. If you want to know more about this new Datsun bro, you can check out Barricade's story over here. Or if you want another Transformers story, check out this playlist over here. Either way, thanks for watching and I hope you come back for more.